The skies turn black, and the high tide has brought settlers from the seas, harbingers of collapse of this very age. The Palisette, as led by steadfast warrior and patriarch Walwetes, and the Sherton, led by a man with fiery ambition, Eoleus. Not only will these factions bring new units and a new narrative for you to fulfill, but they also bring new mechanics unique to the Sea People's armies. Let's take a look at the new features the Sea Peoples have in Total War Pharaoh, High Tide. The Sea Peoples start quite differently from the other factions of Total War Pharaoh. Arriving on the shores of Canaan as Walwetus and Anatolia as Eoleus, both leaders do not start with the settlement to call their own. Both the Sherton and the Peleset are hybrid factions, by which we mean they can both be a horde, a classic settling faction, or a combination of the two. Through the new royal decree set out for the Sea People's factions, you can determine how you want to play mechanically. Do you invest in settling, ending your days as a roaming horde and calling these new lands home? Do you opt to take everything not nailed down, burn down the walls of society and remain nomadic to the end? Or alternatively, do you combine both outlooks, opting for the stability city walls can bring, whilst also hunting down those who would try to depose you? Choosing the nomadic horde path is something within the Sea People's psyche, but as a total war player, you might be concerned as to how to keep your war camp thriving. After all, it can be difficult to prosper when your foundation is ever moving. War Spoils is a mechanic we're adding for the Sea Peoples in Total War Pharaoh, High Tide. Through War Spoils, you can locate the closest high value targets for large payouts of resources, or for prizes like ancillaries, soldiers, or workforce surplus. After collecting your reward through force, you'll need to wait for them to become available again. To get the most from War Spoils, you'll need to be acting as a horde faction, as the more settlements you own, the less potent War Spoils become, until eventually there's no gain from them. If you're playing as Fapeliset or the Sherden as a horde force, however, War Spoils is key to ensure your survival in the end of the Bronze Age. A major tool in the Sea People's arsenal is the Tribal Outpost. Whether you're playing as a horde or as a settled army, the buffs these outposts give you will be pivotal for your victory. Outposts can be constructed in the settlement's region whether you own the nearby settlement or not. By sending your army to their position, you can take the outpost and then build a tribal outpost there, staking your claim without needing to own the land. Tribal outposts come in three forms, depending on the state of the settlement, ranging from foreign region, owned region, and raised region. They offer food, recruitment slots, improved ambush chances, and influence. The paths to power available during the Bronze Age Collapse are many. Some choose to be the Great King of the Hittites, some the Pharaoh of Egypt. For the Sea Peoples, these choices are still present, but the simple cost of entering their courts are three times higher than their counterparts. With a price so high and an age so cataclysmic, Surely the old ways only lead to ruin. Why choose tradition when you can forge your own path? In High Tide, the Sea Peoples get access to their own path of power, electing not to take the path of the Great King or Pharaoh, but rather the path of the Sea Peoples or the path of the Marauder. The path of the Sea Peoples represents the hybrid nature of the Peleset and Sherden forces, allowing you to balance your playstyle between Horde and Settler. The menu shows off the balance like this. Each square grants different boons. Your position on the chart is calculated through your blades and dwelling points that are separated into horde and settled. To gain more horde blades and dwelling points, you need to build up your horde armies and their structures, as well as building tribal outposts. For settled points, you need to build up your captured settlements and your settled armies. Your points values can be changed, by changing hordes into armies or by granting sovereignty to settlements. 
both of these changes are also reversible. If you want to spend some time in the center of the chart, you can use the Akish Ceremony to return to the center for a few turns. Find your balance, or sway it, to direct your peoples to a new life. The Path of the Marauders is a path to power the Sea Peoples, as well as all other current factions can take, to spread fear in these lands. By taking the Path of the Marauders, you gain a new resource, Eminence. You gain this by performing aggressive actions on your conquest, like raiding, raising settlements, and of course, through combat. By earning Eminence, you gain new abilities to use both pre- and post-battle. Promise of Glory allows you to bribe enemy units over to your side before a battle, casting aside loyalty to their leaders for a chance to survive under the New World Order. Dominance sees you turning the local populace against the settlement pre-battle, provided the garrison is small enough. Those who took up arms against the garrison become their own army also, but they cannot gain experience or exchange units, but are willing to die in the name of overthrowing their previous rules. A display of power can be used to frighten and demoralize your foes before combat, striking fear into their hearts for a low cost of eminence. Finally, once you've won a battle for a settlement, you can opt to raise and exterminate it. Doing so grants you additional loot and rewards from burning it asunder, as well as giving you additional replenishment for your forces and influence, depending on the size of settlement you burn to the ground on your path to power. These are the new tools in your arsenal coming with high tide. Will you take on the path of the Sea Peoples and make yourself a home in new lands as the Peliset or the Sherton? Or will you take on the path of the Marauder and burn down these lands to begin anew? The high tide is rolling in, and with it comes the end of an age. Will you ride the waves or succumb to them? <laughs>